I'm so diverse. Whether you support or oppose RPG safety tools, I promise this video provides information you haven't heard before. So I hope you'll stay until the end and please keep politics out of the comments. This isn't Breitbart or Mother Jones. That's just not what we do here. I want this video to be kid friendly because frankly, there's two main groups who most need to hear this. Old people who thinks RPG safety tools are stupid and young people who need to learn the facts about this topic from someone who isn't standing on a soapbox. To keep this discussion rated PG, I'll be required to monitor my language. So you may need to do a little detective work deciphering my meaning at times from the euphemisms and other innuendos. And if you're a parent, you may simply wish to review this video first to be certain it is acceptable for your own children. There's some fairly disturbing facts that I'll be presenting near the end. Why are we talking about this? Because hurt people hurt people. That may be an explanation, but it should never be an excuse. The fact there are even discussions about RPG safety tools serves as a testament to the overall empathy and compassion typically found in the tabletop gaming community. What are RPG safety tools? RPG safety tools are guidelines and practices implemented in tabletop role-playing games to ensure the emotional and physical well-being of players. These tools are intended to facilitate an environment of harm reduction for a more inclusive gaming environment, particularly in games where sensitive or potentially triggering content may arise. Some common RPG safety tools typically include lines and veils, the X card, a script change, content warnings, check-ins, and a session zero. Lines and veils establish boundaries regarding what content is acceptable or not within the game. Lines represent topics that are typically off limits, while veils represent topics that can be included, but not described in detail. The X card is a physical or virtual card that any player can use to signal discomfort or a need to change or remove content from the game. When the X card is played, the game pauses and the content is adjusted accordingly. A script change indicates a technique for managing content in a game, including fast forwarding through scenes, rewinding to change outcomes, or pausing to discuss or alter content. Content warnings is the practice of communicating potentially triggering or sensitive content before it might be introduced in the game. This allows players to mentally prepare or opt out if necessary. A check-in is the practice of communicating with players to gauge their comfort levels and address any concerns that may have developed during the game. And a session zero is the pre-game meeting where players discuss expectations, boundaries, and any sensitive topics the DM might include during gameplay. This helps ensure everyone is on the same page and comfortable with the content. These practices are intended to promote player well-being, foster trust, and encourage healthy communication within the gaming group to ultimately enhance the overall gaming experience. Okay, well, cool. I guess we can just wrap this video up then. Except there's more to this discussion that you should know. At their very best, RPG safety tools serve to protect vulnerable people from harm. We all want that, right? But what if there may also be unintended harm by simply following the common talking points concerning RPG safety tools? I only started making these videos here in the spring of 2023, so most topics pertaining to our hobby were already covered. I only make a video if I believe something has yet to be said on any given topic or if it hasn't been covered properly. Considering how much has already been discussed, argued, lamented, and advocated for regarding this topic, I'm more than a little surprised some of the most important facts still remain missing from other sources. It seems like most YouTube videos addressing RPG safety tools are either angry old white dudes with sunglasses telling us how diverse they are, I am so diverse, while insisting that RPG safety tools are stupid, or from younger people who haven't been playing for 40 years and absolutely believe you need RPG safety tools. Human sacrifice, dogs and cats living together, mass hysteria. But perhaps lack some basic context and facts surrounding the issue. Frankly, my own evolution on this matter went from angry old white guy who thought it sounded ridiculous to where I am now which is more sympathetic to those who promote them while I still feeling some very important guidelines and facts have been excluded and substituted by emotional arguments that might cause harm. I'm gonna be sharing some alarming facts here that might surprise you just as they surprised me and maybe 
if we're all lucky, we can meet up in the middle. First, let's agree that most normal, emotionally sound people want a supportive environment with a peaceful, productive life without harm to themselves or others. I once had a job that I loved, but absolutely hated the toxic management. They were some of the most negative, unhappy people I have ever been subjected to. So I ultimately quit and started my own business. Now I don't have to be around toxic people. Just like the job I loved, but not the terrible people, none of us want to play a game we love if it subjects us to an emotionally unhealthy experience with negative people. RPG safety tools can be useful for creating and maintaining a healthy space in gaming. They are intended to protect vulnerable people from harm and can be very useful in achieving those goals. We cannot assume everyone simply possesses the necessary interpersonal skills, wisdom, and experience to prevent harm at the gaming table. Sometimes harm can happen unintentionally, even by the most well-meaning of individuals. For example, in the mid to late 90s, with 20 years of DMing experience already behind me, one of the best players I've ever had was a woman named Rachel. In a very short time, she mastered the art of separating player knowledge from character knowledge. She was an amazing role player and never once had to speak in a funny voice to do it. Rachel's character was Greta the Paladin, and also one of the few players who didn't play lawful good like it was some form of extreme mental illness, which is a flawed moral perspective many playing paladins often make. It also doesn't hurt that Rachel was intelligent and beautiful inside and out. During one session, Greta the Paladin faced misogyny from her own people. That was 25 years ago, and I've never forgotten how Rachel directly told me, as a woman, she already faced enough misogyny in real life and did not find it enjoyable in her fantasy gaming. This was an important teaching moment for me. I didn't need to change the beliefs of NPCs that Greta dealt with, but as a responsible DM, I had to be mindful of those prejudices to avoid causing the player discomfort. This was no different than the lines and veils we now have in gaming today. Admittedly, when I first heard about this thing called RPG safety tools, I had what seems to be the common response from grognards, which is this knee-jerk moment of, oh jeez, followed by a condescending moan. But then, looking through an old DM folder from the 90s, I found this. Literally pages of regulations and conduct guidelines I expected of new players to my groups. This information informed new players what to expect from my games, and I've been doing check-ins as long as I can remember to hear feedback about the game. I've performed pre-game introductions and player meetups since forever, which are no different than a session zero. It turns out RPG safety tools are really just the things experienced game masters were already doing. I had already been practicing and enforcing RPG safety tools long before they had an official name. And I doubt I'm the only one. We just called it using common sense and not being a terrible person. So I became curious. Where did this whole concept come from and who first coined the label and why? This is where things take a really dark turn. This is where the discussion might not be suitable for young children. The label RPG Safety Tools was first officially introduced in 2003 by Ron Edwards in Sex and Sorcery, a supplement for his RPG Sorcerer. It was advertised as the third supplement for Sorcerer. Bring your sorcerer game into the taboo realms of love, sexuality, gender, and betrayal. This game supplement provides guidelines for moving into some of the trickiest areas in role-playing. It helps you work out how to bring these themes into your game in a way which everyone will enjoy. Really push your role-playing boundaries. Now quoting directly from page 10 of his Sex and Sorcery book, it actually says, Imaginative acts of and abuse occur in the game as ways to abuse fellow players emotionally. I'm sorry, what? Imaginative acts of occur? And how to bring these themes into your group in a way in which everyone will enjoy? What? Yet RPG.net gave the book a substance review of excellent. Back in third edition, D&D from 2003, there was a book released under the OGL gaming license called the Book of Erotic Fantasy. Fun fact, I know most of the people used as models in that book. I've even dated a few of them back in the day. For the most part, they're good people. 
But that's a book nobody asked for, and we definitely didn't need. I'm not an apologist for WotC. However, they're a business. And if you see them closing loopholes to prevent things like that from being published, I think we need to be sympathetic. That stuff never belonged in a tabletop role-playing game like Dungeon Dragons to begin with. Also, both of those books, Sex and Sorcery and The Book of Erotic Fantasy, were published in 2003. What was going on in 2003? Was the game industry being controlled by hormonal teenagers? <laughs> <laughs> now, some people, like that sex and sorcery guy, might insist that intimate relations are normal and therefore should not be off limits to a game of D&D. I would have to ask, how much do you want to roleplay the very graphic details of my character taking a dump? That's also normal. Do you think the game master and other players should be subjected to that? In a fantasy role-playing game? Really? If somebody needs to role-play the intimate details of their character engaging in intimate relations during a game of Dungeons and Dragons, then maybe those erotic fantasies belong elsewhere, like in the bedroom with their significant other, or a therapist couch, not at the gaming table. Some might argue that RPG safety tools are important to protect vulnerable children. However, if an adult DMing for children needs RPG safety tools to protect those children, that game master definitely shouldn't be allowed to ever DM for children, and no amount of safety tools is going to fix that. Playing games like Dungeons & Dragons undoubtedly can be very therapeutic, but do not confuse that with meaning D&D is therapy. Your game master is not your therapist unless, and this is a very rare and unique example, you're seeing a licensed therapist that has specifically arranged tabletop gaming in the context of therapy. That would not describe most games of D&D. In August of 2022, Polygon published an article titled D&D Spelljammer Reboot will require some very specific content warnings. The subtext said killer clowns and giant spider ships might be a deal breaker for some players. Then we receive a content warning this article includes images of clowns and spiders. This is the image of the clowns. And this is the spiders. I genuinely thought that article was satire, like The Onion, when I first saw it, because games like D&D at their most basic level involved the actions of heroes breaking into somebody's home killing them and stealing their stuff. Just how sensitive can anyone really be when they're breaking and entering then murdering the inhabitants? Sensitivity to others is important. Empathy for others is important. I can't say there aren't people out there who were locked in a basement full of spiders by a cult of evil clowns, but I would hope that's the most rare of exceptions. And RPG safety tools aren't gonna help that person. They need a licensed therapist and nobody should ever expect that degree of counseling from a game of D&D. If you're determined to misunderstand my intentions here, I'll simply refer to something Jordan Peele said in 2017 while promoting his movie Get Out. He said one of the themes that movie hoped to convey is how even well-meaning people can act in such a way as to cause more harm than good to the causes they claim to advocate for. Everything about that Polygon article is an example of that harm. From June of 2020, an article from Psychological Science explains how research has shown that trigger warnings not only fail to help, but may actually even cause harm. Remember that Polygon article? Research has shown using trigger warnings can be invalidating to trauma survivors because they're told over and over again that the warnings are helping when in reality they aren't. I'll provide links in this video's description so you may read about this further. I had initially thought RPG safety tools were the result of some people being too sensitive and overreacting until I read some of what's been going on in the hobby. Violence against children? What? Intimate sexual encounters? Huh? In a game of Dungeons and Dragons? What is going on? I've played since 1980 and none of those things have ever come up. And if those things are being introduced into your gaming, it's not an X card, lines and veils or scene changes you need most. What you need is to leave the room and find a new group of friends. I can't stress this enough. If you have a game master that finds abuse fun, there's a very real possibility that person is not emotionally healthy and there aren't enough RPG safety tools in the world to fix that. 
Just leave, find a new group, find a healthy game. Tabletop gaming is more popular now than ever and you'll find other friends to play with. Just be careful, because this also means there's an increased likelihood of untreated and dangerous, mentally ill individuals participating in the hobby. Don't allow unhealthy behaviors to be normalized in life or in gaming. I really think that younger players would benefit from remembering that us Generation X grognards grew up in a world where we played with lawn darts large, deadly, sharp-tipped metal javelins that some would hurl far into the sky above our heads until we lost them in the glare of the sun. Those metal javelins might land in another kid's skull. We didn't have mandatory bicycle helmets. We were all free-range kids, and our parents had no idea where we were after we left the houses. Our playgrounds had iron metal scaffolding stuck in the ground covered over with asphalt. Our toys were literally trying to kill us and not everyone made it out alive. I'm not saying that was a better way to live, because it wasn't. But as George Carlin once said, Life doesn't change because you post a sign. So a lot of the older gamers have a negative knee-jerk reaction to hearing the label of RPG safety tools. But if you actually explain it reasonably, you'll find that most of us are already doing that. And the fact that younger generation of gamers seem to have started including some pretty terrible topics into the games is shocking to us, and not a lot still shocks us. The things RPG safety tools are meant to protect gamers from don't belong there to begin with. The guy who first officially created them was introducing into the game the very things he claimed to be protecting gamers from. As I previously said, you don't need an X card, you need a new group of friends. My parents, and every generation before them, were burdened with enormous shame and guilt for mental health issues. Mental illness was considered some type of personal embarrassment and failure. And as a society, we are still trying to put that behind us. But there is no shame in seeking treatment for mental illness. If you are in a game that requires someone to use an X card, that might be a warning sign. It could mean the group is toxic, or it could mean the person using the card needs to seek therapy. There's no shame in that. I'm saying that no tabletop fantasy game should ever under any circumstances be causing psychological harm to anyone, and if it is causing harm, something is terribly wrong. D&D is not therapy, and an X card is not treatment for psychological trauma. People who passionately promote RPG safety tools might think they have your best interests at heart, and are likely unaware of potential harm they might be causing. We need to be educated about these important issues. Not everyone's opinions are equally valid. That may be a hard pill to swallow, but it's true. If opinions are not formed by educated and objective facts, then those opinions aren't helping anyone. As Mark Twain once said, it ain't what you don't know that gets you into trouble, it's what you know for sure that just ain't so. And to be against RPG safety tools would mean you're not in favor of protecting vulnerable people, like children. And I don't think that's a position anyone would reasonably support. It might simply be a misunderstanding of what they are. And as I explained earlier, I had already been engaging in most of those practices at least eight years before they were named and published. If you take nothing else away from this video, just remember these facts. The man who officially brought RPG safety tools into our game was an award-winning indie game designer, but he is not a licensed therapist. And if we are to believe his own published works, he seems to suggest that imaginative r could be fun. It is not fun and should never have a place in our games. And just like the research behind trigger warnings, an X card should never be a substitute for professional therapy. Don't believe otherwise. On the positive side of this discussion, the biggest problem RPG safety tools might have is the label. This is an example of why I hate labels and buzzwords so much. They allow us to be ignorant of the issues, which gives us permission to be angry about things we don't fully understand. These things we currently call RPG safety tools would probably be better served if we renamed them RPG organizational tools. The word safety makes a mockery of real world dangers. Abuse is real. Racism is real. If fictional space spider ships cause someone trauma, and if anybody really thinks imaginary dancing space monkeys are racist, resulting in emotional distress, they don't need an X card, they need a therapist. And I say that with compassion. We all need to promote good mental health, and that doesn't happen with feel-good buzzwords 
that aren't really benefiting vulnerable people. One of my best friends is a college professor, and to quote him, hypersensitivity is as great a contemporary problem as insensitivity was in previous generations. Neither is conducive to calm and rational dialogue. Throughout my entire childhood, I was mocked and ridiculed for what others deemed too sensitive, so I'm not gonna judge anyone's boundaries and acceptable levels of imaginary violence. You'll have to decide those boundaries on your own. I fully support RPG organizational tools, but I cannot support the officially accepted RPG safety tools talking points as they open a door to normalizing harmful toxic behaviors by passively suggesting those toxic behaviors could simply be a normal part of the game. And that's wrong. Harmful toxic behaviors should never be a part of your games and you should never substitute them for common sense and therapy. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'm your host Atten here at We Love TTRPGs and I appreciate your support by liking this video and let me know in the comments about your own experiences. Remember to be safe and have fun. Thanks for watching.